should probably go out of the news. You know, we actually do a show instead of just chit chat bullshit. Um, haha, <laughs> swear. Uh, the first three stories are actually really quick because you're just the headline tells you everything. Um, so I'm just going to power through these. Um, the first official t- or the official title for Star Wars Episode Eight has been revealed, and it is Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Yeah, it's slightly interesting because they've changed the coloring of the logo to red, which they usually do on the third movies in the trilogies. Uh, because Revenge of the Sith went red, uh, Return of the Jedi went red. The Last Jedi also, there's a lot of confusion as to whether or not it means is Rey the Last Jedi, is Kylo the Last Jedi, is Luke the Last Jedi... Jedi being a word that is both singular and plural could be a lot of things. Yes. So it's interesting. Yes. And uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi is scheduled for release on December 15th. Um, Flash and Supergirl musical episode is becoming a Glee reunion as they cast Darren Chris as the menacing ma- music meister. Um, explain who music meister is real quick. Uh, Music Meister is actually, I don't know that this is a character that was original to comics. I think it's kind of a playoff of one of the other characters. It may have been used in one of the Justice League cartoons at one point, I believe. I believe the last time it was used was the Batman and it was, and he was played by uh, Neil Patrick Harris. Right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but it's. It's it's probably the same sort of theme as what happened in the Buffy musical, which uh, Demon came up and made everybody sing, it, which works. You know, it. The point is, is that we're gonna watch this and we're gonna enjoy it because of the characters and because of the actors and how all their talents. Uh, and it's cute that they did get somebody from Glee to come back with them. Also from I guess their seasons of Glee because I didn't recognize any of these people from the show when I was watching it, but I left kind of early. Um, yeah, so the real quick to fill everyone in, uh, Grant Gustin and Melissa Benoist, who play, um, you know, Flash and Supergirl respectively, were both on Glee with Darren Chris. Um, they were uh, Darren and Grant's characters were at the preparatory school, um, like the rival prep school, um, and then uh, Melissa came in as one of the later uh, members of the Glee club. So yeah, it's a nice little. Um, maybe we'll get news and uh, more Glee people. We'll get Jane Litch as uh, well, he, doing a cameo. Here's, here's one more little tidbit about it: is Darren Chris uh, just recently was doing the the play for Hedwig and the Angry Inch, which just before that had been brought out to the the mega stage with Neil Patrick Harris. So Darren Chris stepping into another NPH role. Yeah. Exactly. And then the final quick hit news story is Samurai Jack's premiere day is announced. Um, Samurai Jack will be coming uh, back to for season five. Um, this is not a reboot. It is a continuation on March 11th at 1130, p- at 1130 p.m. on as a part of Cartoon Network's Adult Swim Toonami line. And so, yeah, this is exciting news. Um, I've they've been re-airing samurai jack and i flipped it through uh, last week to see the pilot and i was just i was astonished at how accurate the comic book was to the movie or to the tv show because the comic book which uh, was written by jim zub lots of pages with no writing yeah same thing with the tv show lots of action done told through music and you know, very little dialogue. And yeah, and and I mean, that's the thing too. Is Samurai Jack, as a show on Cartoon Network itself, is I can't really see how it appeals as a kids show. Uh, it makes much more sense to be in the tsunami block than it does on the the regular schedule in between episodes of Adventures of Gumball and Uncle Grandpa and shit. So. Makes makes a good deal of sense. It's good that it's coming back. My best friend is a huge Samurai Jack fan. She loves the series. Uh, calls Jack her betrothed. <laughs> uh, so I'm excited for her. It it was uh, not a show that I watched all the time. The episodes that I did pop into here and there were great. But it's yeah. it's heavy story, you know, in four seasons. Uh, it yeah. might be something that you want to try to catch in syndication 
while they're we're replaying the episodes right now. No, yeah, and our so our more discussiony story uh, for else news is that uh, Seinfeld is actually leaving Crackle for Netflix. Um, now this is not the sitcom. This is Jerry Seinfeld is bringing comedians in cars getting coffee to Netflix, which is it's currently airing on Crackle right now. Um, and they're bringing all the past episodes, but then the new episodes will be, will be premiering later this year in 2017. Um, this is an interesting deal because I, I see this as a double edged sword. Um, this is great for Seinfeld because of, you know, of just with how, you know, I mean, he's a big name and just seeing him going, and this is not just comedians in cars but this is stand-up specials as well i believe it's it's a very i think it's gonna be a very similar deal to um uh dave Chappelle and i think chris rock has a deal like there's a few other comedians who have these deals with netflix and netflix um, seems to be dominating that market where it used to be that you'd get comedians and they it would be about when their special was going to hit either on Comedy Central or originally HBO. And HBO still gets a good deal of that. Um, but Netflix has been getting a lot of these lately. A lot of yeah. big names have been going over there. And it, maybe that's part of it. But the other part that there's some rumors, and it's just speculation at this point, it's not really even fully rumored, that Sony might be looking to sell off Columbia Pictures because Sony has had a tough year. Uh, their Their biggest films were not well received in the box office uh passengers and ghostbusters both underperformed and only two films for them made over 100 million this year and that was ghostbusters and the angry birds movie uh sausage party came in third with 97 million uh in the last four years they they've had two movies break 200 million and that was specter uh the james bond movie and amazing spider-man 2 and we know that Amazing Spider-Man killed that franchise and forced them to relaunch in conjunction with Marvel uh, for mm-hmm. the Spider-Man character. So Sony's been in not incredible shape for the last few years. And all they have really coming up are Spider-Man Homecoming, uh, the Spider-Man animated movie, apparently after that, and the Emoji movie, which just, I don't even know what to think about that. But... Yeah, Angry Birds is one of the only ones that did over 100 million. So maybe it's just it's, it's really kind of a tough time for them. And Crackle is a service that I think has always been an also ran. It's not something that people predominantly think of uh, of where they're going to go for content, uh, especially original content. So yeah, it's it's one of those that if you sign up for the the newsletter, you will get the email saying this is what we have coming. And they've had you know Firefly and Serenity on there. Um, you know, and, and you know a lot of the content that is you know has Sony's involvement in there. Um, but I, but when it comes to originals, it's not a lot. I mean, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, you know, has you know three Emmy nominations. Um, you know, in the Variety Talk series category. Um, the only other originals that I could think of is there's the show Startup that stars Martin Freeman. Which I watched that. That was really good. Um, the, but I could easily see, you know, if Net, if Crackle wanted to sell off some of the stuff, I could see, um, you know, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Netflix, all picking that up, and and take bringing it over there. Um, you know, comedians, comedians and cars getting coffee is already over there, and the other one is Sports Jeopardy. Sports Jeopardy is one that, you know, you could put that on 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 NBC Sports Network and be good. Yeah, I and, see the ads for Sports Jeopardy all the time because I watch Jeopardy pretty regularly, and and it's always like the oh yeah, if you like Jeopardy, you go watch Sports Jeopardy. It's like no, I don't want to watch fucking Sports Jeopardy, and I'm sure as shit don't want to go to a crackle app that I have to download and install to to watch it. And I'm I'm a guy with fucking Roku's in every room and yep. and access to tons of streaming content. I just don't know that the the uh the non 
technical people are are aiming for that stuff. And at this point in time, there's so many different companies coming out with their own streaming services. And I I was just going over this with the wife yesterday. They, it's going to be really hard to prove that you're worth investing in. She wants to get the uh, the streaming service Shutter, which is all horror movies and and uh, horror theme stuff, which makes absolute sense. And considering that I do uh, a podcast that deals with some of that stuff, it, it would make sense for me too. We've been we've been subscribed to the Full Moon Productions service for a while because that's where I watched uh, Blood Dolls that we reviewed. And it was just like, oh, well, I'll keep this going. But there's not enough content there for it. And a lot of that stuff is on Shutter. So you, you have to get to a point where this stuff starts to consolidate. Uh, it, it, there's too many different ones and nobody's going to subscribe to it or they won't subscribe to it for very long. It's like, here's my 30 days. Okay, uh, CBS, I'll watch all the fucking shit pile of your Star Trek show if it ever comes out. And then <laughs> I'll be done and I'll move along and maybe I'll get you next season when that happens again. But I'm not going to spend eight bucks a month on your service yeah. for one, maybe two things. Like, oh, here's your Big Brother spinoff. But that's, what else have you heard about from CBS's service that that's enticing nothing at this point the, Whereas, for what i will say with that is for the fans of the of the shows um the good fight does look intriguing which one so is the I, good fight that's the good wife spinoff that stars oh, right. that stars uh ingrid from uh, game of thrones yeah i mean but that's that's just it is are they underserving their audience on TV to try to get these shows launched on their streaming service. And how well is that going to pay off? I, I think people who want CBS content are so used to having CBS content on television and their secondary TV thing. If we're not streaming TV content from an actual TV source, then it's Hulu, Yeah, you know, and, or if it's movies, then it's Netflix or if it's Amazon, which has a mix of the two, but is so, much of crapshoot, but it's there if you're already an Amazon Prime subscriber. I just, it's kind of like there's Android and there's iOS, and then for a while there was Microsoft's phone service. But, but you could tell, you could tell that there were the two things that people were going to keep going to. And I feel like that's the, the streaming services too, is that it's, we've already found our winners. Yeah. And I don't think that's great. You know, yeah, there's HBO Go because HBO is its own fucking beast. But HBO Go exists for people who cut cable and that's it. I don't know, man. I, 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 I see Crackle like I saw the Yahoo streaming thing that did the thankful for it. But the last season of Community is like, here's our half ass attempt. And... Uh, who knows? Like CISO is another one. CISO was out there and his content that I would like to see, Harmon, uh, Dan Harmon's uh, D&D gaming thing. Harmon Quest, yeah. Like fun. Yeah. This is, I, I think we're starting to get, and I mentioned this in the pre-show, and I'll mention it here. I think we are starting to get to, I don't want to say the bubble for streaming services, but we're starting to get to that point with the streaming services where the bigger ones are going to eat the little ones. Well, we're at maximum capacity, I think is what yeah. it is. Uh, I mean, remember yeah. when Microsoft had their original content with uh, the Guild was yeah. on Xbox streaming. And then PlayStation had their content with the uh, Brian Bendis show. With um, Powers. Powers, yeah. It, but these things came and dried up. And those are not small companies. These are powerhouses. YouTube can't get original content to really go anywhere. And we're talking yeah. about fucking YouTube. You know, and we've known amazing people who've worked at YouTube. It's just, it's kind of a weird thing to see that the audience goes to where it thinks things are the best deal for them or where yeah. they think everybody else is. And right now, that seems to be Netflix, Hulu, Amazon. You yeah, know, it's the same thing as, like, why is everybody on Facebook? Because it's fucking <laughs> Facebook. Because no one, want, no one wanted to be on Vine. Uh, but no, 
<laughs> I think with Amazon, they have a little bit of a extra head and in, in where I could see them acquiring a lot of these other, other things because you can already add the quote unquote channels. Like you could, the Comic-Con HQ, you can add the, a subscription to them and it's billed through Amazon. Um, Shutter, you can bill through the Amazon Prime. So, I mean, if you're paying the $99 a year for for Prime, you can now you can then add, you know, for, you know, like... Which is exactly and, what I think, is that it's, yeah. at some point they've just become the additions to another service or another yeah. service buys them out. You know, we, we get you and we get all your contracts with the people that you already have things on, and then we just make it all in one. You know, and that's what Comcast does. That's what all of these things do. And then you have the wars between, well, Comcast owns NBC or vice versa. And so we don't have to worry about having deals with NBC on our own network, but sometimes we have to fight to keep CBS on our thing. Yeah. Uh, or AT&T does the same thing. It's like, well, we're not going to pay for your TNT channels. Well, shit, then you're going to lose a lot of stuff and you're going to lose a lot of viewers and you're going to get a bunch of commercials saying, hey, by the way, guys, do you like The Walking <laughs> Dead? Yeah, uh, AT&T is trying to screw you over by taking it away. You should call them and rip their m- a new asshole. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it here for uh, the else the else news we will be right back 